Out, I'm just going to introduce this talk, which is pretty much all about the uh, lovely badge that you're wearing around your necks. And we have a panel of experts because we all know how much um, we like experts and um, uh, in Britain these days. And anyway, these guys put you together your badge, so I'd like to welcome them to the stage. So please put your hands together for them. Hey, uh, quick round of introductions. I'm Matt LWK. I am the badge team lead, and I've been responsible this year for delivering the actual physical hardware and working with uh, our assembly team. Uh, John T sorted out all the sponsorship. Bob did all the initial concepts and designs. Kimball's been working on the uh, MicroPython and the Wi Fi drivers, which is why they all work on the Wi Fi. Uh, Tom has been working on the back end server in Perl, because he's strange. <laughs> <laughs> why not? Why not? Um, Matt, who's new to the team this year, he's been doing all the um, graphics library in the UGFX and making all the screen work for us. And Merrick, who's been doing all the main app and all the Python uh, side of the actual Python side that's running on the badges right now. Yeah? Cool. <coughs> so, why do we do a badge? Because it's fun and it's hard work. And it's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seemed like a good idea at the time. Yeah, seemed like a really good idea at the time. Yeah, he's come back again. It's all right, he went to sleep. Sorry. Um, yeah, so this year it was um, a case of let's go big. Um, and we really, really wanted to put the Wi-Fi on there. So we started looking at ESPs and Wi-Fi. And we just got some random pictures of early development, early screens getting going. Um, the badge has... Um, a CPU running MicroPython, which meant we were able to get you guys to write all the apps for us. We provide the framework, you write apps. So all of you guys have done the scheduling apps this year and the bar API apps and there's geolocation and 60 or something like that. Apps. Mario, Mario theme. Mario things, all sorts of apps. I haven't even looked at because I haven't seen it for, since Saturday. Um, so we started back in May, two years ago. Yeah. yeah, no, a year ago, sorry, May last year, um, and we finished yesterday. <laughs> Sometime after we gave the badges out. Yeah, we'll yeah. be finished in about three weeks' time. <laughs> yeah. um, so we've got some of the app screens. Um, this was, um, these pictures, are, we, we, we went uh, HDD where we go and get these things built. Um, they're just down Letchworth, so um, the boot is full of components, there's about 40,000 pounds worth of components in that boot. Um, they're a bit of factory and the machines that built the boards. Um, so Knock, we kept asking, we kept telling Knock we're gonna um, put one and a half thousand extra devices on the Wi-Fi and they were like, yeah, it'll be fine. And you've all found that it's struggling, right? <laughs> um, so you can see here at about 10 o'clock in the morning on, on, on Saturday where the graph of associated devices just peaks as we give out all the badges on the first day. And the big pink, uh, purple slice on, on the graph is all the TI devices connected to the network. So over 1,400 1, TI based devices, which is the Wi-Fi and the badge. Um, random numbers. So we built around about 2,000 for 1,750 of these, which is where we got spares to swap in and out for anything that breaks. Project to the total is around about 80,000 pounds. All of the money for this comes from sponsors. It's not part of the tickets. So we have to find that like 80,000 pounds was. Um, 10,000 pounds of that is in the MCU, 20,000 pounds in the Wi-Fi. There's 30,000 pounds in just the assembly alone. Uh, another 3,400 in the PCBs. Over 120 components per badge. It took a minute each, minute, two minutes each to build. Um, uh, HCD had allowed four days for the build and it actually took them eight. <laughs> so uh, we got in some trouble there. Um, the MicroPython hex, the final firmware image, we used up most of the 512K that we had available. Uh, Tom and Catalyst made out 24,000 lines of Perl. <laughs> Tom I was like, every line. <laughs> um, <laughs> Almost. We needed someone to dev the server. Uh, and we were like, oh, do it in Python, because loads of us know Python. But Tom's like, yeah, but I'm a Perl developer. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like, <clears throat> Fuck it, I'm gonna get on with it. Rather than learning Python, I'm just gonna write in Perl. And none of you'll be able to change it, but it get it got done. We actually, the important have, thing. we actually have a pull request in. There is one other catalyst dev on site. I don't know where he is. There he is. <laughs> I still haven't accepted it, I've forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> so um 
We now have 69 apps on the App Store from all of you lot, which is pretty good. Uh, 120 revisions, so it's eight, you're able to go and revise your app, so um, 120 revisions. We allowed 84, we rejected 36, that was probably bugs of revisions that we need to fix up. Yeah, most of the things just don't work. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've tried to send emails to everyone who wrote them, so check your emails if your app hasn't been accepted yeah, yet. Yeah, our, our content approval process was nowhere as strict as Apple's, so um, most went through. Um, between the initial MicroPython, which we branched, and our version of MicroPython, we have another 250 new Git commits in that repository alone, um, which we are pushing back stuff to MicroPython. Um, 290 lines difference. Uh, okay. um, Microsoft asked us to point out these stats. So your badges have been sending, if you opted in, they've been sending stats back to Microsoft, who was the big sponsor. They sponsored 15,000 pounds to cover all the cost of the parts. Um, part of that was we're pushing data to Azure, so this is IoT, in action. So we've sent 68,000 records, uh, about 28 megs of data. And, uh, that's all gone up to Azure IoT Suite remote monitoring solution, and that is available. Anyone can deploy that, and all the codes up on GitHub. And uh, Paul was hoping to get some nice graphs up of like we've got, we should be able to do like geolocation off that data and sort of heat maps of where thingies that um, clusters of badges are, but we haven't had a chance to implement it. Um, sponsors? I'll let John to talk for a little while. Do I stand up? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, so we mentioned at the start that all of this is paid for by sponsors. So for those who don't know, we've done a badge at EMF ever since we started back in 2012. And Frankly, it was quite ambitious to do a badge for the very first event we ever did. And we pulled it off then, and we've continued to mostly pull it off ever since. Um, mostly. Uh, at this, uh, at this time, it, it, was, it was going fairly well. We actually had discussions with TI going on for two years before this event, left over from the last event. Um, and it, it, it's a very long email thread to the point where it started making their email clients have problems and they had to say, can we please start talking somewhere else? So it's, the, the sponsorship discussions are, are, are on very long. Um, but the majority of the sponsorship has been in components before that. So uh, Texas Instruments provided the Wi-Fi chip and uh, ST provided the microcontroller. And the reason that we have both Texas Instruments and ST on the same thing, both sponsoring, which is remarkable, um, and when we realized that, and I mentioned it to them, they, they weren't massively happy. Um, <laughs> uh, but they, they both agreed that it was OK in the end and that it would be benefit everyone all around. Um, but MicroPython itself was only ported to ST microcontrollers. Uh, the text instrument one was not. It's not reasonable for us to do that. The reason we use MicroPython is, A, because we want something that to be really easy to develop. People who've had our previous badges, which I imagine is about half the room, um, they've generally been Arduino-based things, which is fine, and that's fairly easy to get going with, but having an app store, uh, app store on Arduino, I didn't say app store, I said app library. <laughs> <laughs> and that will be bleeped out. Um, it is, uh, the, I've forgotten what I was saying. Uh, is, um, the reason we use MicroPython is because it's much easier for us to get going in terms of developing things and to have apps on, on the badge in the first place. Um, and the development for that, it's just a bit tricky. So we could have done another Arduino-based badge based on an ST or just pure TI platform. That was totally feasible. But their aim for this badge was two things. It had to have a screen, well, three things. Um, it had to have a screen, it had to have Wi-Fi, and it had to have MicroPython. And that was a bit of a moonshot to start with. Um, and frankly, I'm a little bit astonished that the team pulled it off. It's, it was a huge amount of work. And it's taken a huge amount of effort, both from ST and TI as well, helping out with this. We've had Texas Instruments send one of their staff on site, and he's been working in the badge, badge tent. He unfortunately had to leave to go to a site visit yesterday, so he was hoping to be here, hasn't quite made it. Um, but they've been working on the drivers. We found bugs in their hardware. It's been a very interesting set of uh, work. Um, and that, you know, that was all going really well. We had all these parts lined up. I was pretty confident about it. I, uh, uh, Boss. All right, I was very confident about it. Um, <laughs> with... Top line. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> I didn't want them to put this in. It is, uh, I specifically, this is from our, our, our ISC chat room where the badge team hang out. So um, at the start of the year, I said sponsorship won't be a problem. Um, 
which, which was mainly fine. And it did look at the time like everything was going to be completely OK. But with sponsorship, for anyone who's ever done sponsorship work, it's quite hard to figure out, to get contracts signed, knowing how much money you're going to get, especially when there's hardware involved and things are going to get made. Um, and it got to the stage where we had all of the components. All the components were there. It was great. What we didn't have was anyone who could make it. And that was when the next line came in, and we were saying that we might have to cancel it. Um, and it was really hard for us. We would, we'd spent a year at this point developing the badge. We had prototypes. The software was working. We had patches in MicroPython. We had patches in, frankly, too many things. And it was going really well. And we were just sat there, and we could not find anyone in the UK who would make it for us. Nobody would sponsor the manufacturing. No one would sponsor the PCBs. We'd, and for anyone who doesn't know about this stuff, which is nearly everyone, um, manufacturing is really expensive. PCBs are not so expensive. You can get them from China. It's fine. You can also get it made in China, but we didn't have the turnaround time anymore. And it would have arrived just next week. So there, there was some, someone who keeps tweeting saying that the EMF camp badge will always be ready for the next camp, um, <laughs> which is not even true, because I don't think the last camp badge is still ready. So, <laughs> but, it, it, in this case, it would have really been the case. But we put our call out, and we decided that it was, I don't know whose idea it was, but it was a last ditch attempt. We're going to go, we will just say, this is what we've built. We're really proud of it. We really want this to happen. And we just fired it out of the internet, everywhere we could, everywhere we could think of. And I remember I, I was sat talking to Russ, and it was about 8 o'clock, and we were just about to publish this thing, assuming that nothing was going to happen. And I wanted to put my phone number on it. And Russ was like, don't put your phone number on it. Because you're gonna, people are going to call you, like, no one is going to call us. Nothing is going to happen. <laughs> the project is screwed. We're done. Let's just move on with this. And he was like, look, let's put another number in that we can forward to your phone number. And I'm extremely glad that he did that. Because we, we put the blog post out. And I was in the office at the time and just ignored it. Uh, and then my phone started ringing. And then my phone kept ringing all day for two days. And that was when I was just like, could people please just stop calling me? I, I don't know how to handle this. I don't know how to handle this much support. And it was my, my favorite one being uh, Microsoft, who emailed us. And apparently, have been wanting to sponsor for years. And they got in touch and said, you have to do it today. You have to get the contract to us today, because it's the end of the tax year. And it has to be today. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's great. Russ, can you send them a contract? At which point Russ went, what contract? I haven't written it yet. <laughs> so, it was, so there was a lot of scrambling. And within two days, we managed to get HCD set up to manufacture it. Um, we got Get Smarter Energy, who offered to, to sponsor the PCBs. Um, and we had TI. And oh, Worth Electronic came in as well. I'm going to skip back, because I can't remember this. Um, <laughs> so, um, uh, Smart Carbon Control, and then RS, and Worth Electronic. And Nexmo came in as well. And we had some really amazing phone calls and conversations. And my, my two favorite ones were with Microsoft, when they just kept offering more. And it was just like, can, can we bring a gazebo as well and put things on it? Like, yes, of course you can do that. That sounds great. Can we bring loads of robots? And, yes, you can bring robots. Can we put workshops? Yes, yes, you can do all of these things. This sounds really good. Please do all of the things. And the next moment was like, can we send text messages to the badges? I'm like, yes, you can send text messages to the badges. So, <laughs> And it just ended up being a really good 48 hours of people offering things for free. And it's really nice when that happens. So, um, <laughs> so essentially, that was me rambling for a little bit too long about how nice our sponsors are and how much you should all love them for giving you free things. Um, the badges themselves, if we do actually sell them, and we are considering doing a second run because people are they're so in demand now, um, would be about 40 to 50 pounds to buy. So they're, they're not a cheap piece of hardware. So keep, keep it safe. Don't throw it in the bin or anything, or at least sell it on eBay to someone who wants it. Um, so there's a couple of other things on here which they've put in, which, again, I'm not massively happy about. And some of these need slightly explaining. Is there a screenshot of the Comic Sans interface? Oh, we lost. Yes, they, they, they really wanted to ship the badge with the entire interface in Comic Sans. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and I, I, I just had to make the call on that one because I've, I've got standards and typography is important, so it's, it's, we're not going with that. To, to and, point out that we were talking IRC and most of us use IRC Cloud, and when you type Comic Sans in IRC Cloud, it displays in Comic Sans, and it was driving half of us mad. <laughs> you and your fancy IRC clients. <laughs> um, and then the last one. 
the, there was the bit about it going on fire. Now, I don't know how many people know this either, but um, if you do have a badge from 2014 and you've been storing it with the battery still plugged in, uh, we did email you about this, but please do unplug the battery. Um, it, it's not likely that it will, it will burst into flame, but it did happen more than once. So, uh, uh, the, the, there was a slight design error. We're very sorry. Just please keep it unplugged for now. Uh, other than that, which isn't in this one. No, this one will definitely not go on fire today. <laughs> so, no, so. Right, am I done? Yeah. Excellent. Um, yes. um, so the badge is all open hardware and open source, so these are the links to all our GitHub. So we have quite a few different ones. So Mark III hardware, so the, the Eagle design files are all licensed under the CERN OHL library, uh, so you can go and tweak it, make your own. If you're that brave, it took me three hours to build three badges in a batch by hand with tweezers, and I did about 20 prototypes. <laughs> um, there's our fork of MicroPython, which has all the changes in it. We're going to slowly merge back as much as we can. Um, Mark III firmware, that's the Python that it downloads when it first boots up, or the bootstrapping code, and runs the app library and the store and, 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 and the built-in apps. Um, and the <coughs> server, which is Tom's Pearl side. Um, please, pull request welcome, anytime. Um, and yeah, so we're going to move on to Q and A. We thought it's the best way of doing it. Um, can we get the yeah? So I have the mic. So basically, put your hand up. I'll try to be as democratic as possible, and we won't have time for everyone. Go. <laughs> All right, on the back here. You can sit down there, man. Yeah, I'm working on the left. Uh, hey, so quick question. So, did these need to be RF certified or in any way, or...? <laughs> they are development modules. <laughs> um, actually, the TI Wi-Fi chip is, I believe, probably yeah. likely to have been yeah, tested been, yeah. for FCC and, yeah. and whatever, but it, as a whole, the module, it's, uh, the board itself hasn't been tested in any way, shape, or form. And it doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be because it's yeah, it's a development board, so we get around that loophole. <laughs> Next. All right, more questions? Oh come on. Oh gosh, I'm getting way over there. <laughs> Sorry, I have to uh, run uh, run around a bit. So these pictures going by are just random stuff I've talked about all through the, the build, so uh, like that's like when the lanyards arrived, building battery charges. <laughs> So how are you, get, are you to do this all again? What? Sorry, what? How eager are you to do this all again for next DMF? Tom? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're just giving you all Android phones next year. <laughs> in, in two years time. I mean, it's like, what, I, what can we improve on? Not well, well, I don't know about anyone else, but I think that we've got a really good base. You know, we've got stuff that people can work on. So I think to, to improve on next year, it will be different peripherals, but I would hope that we can build upon the same base so that people can in, like, uh, contribute really well. More RAM. <laughs> um, frankly, we actually need more people to help. Uh, the, the team this time was okay, but this is the entire team sat on the stage. And producing some, a piece of hardware at not inconsiderable scale is really hard. Now, some of this has worked okay because people have experience in the areas that matter. Without Matt, we couldn't have made it because he, he knew how to get electronics made. Without Gina HCD, HCD, who assembled it, helping, we probably would have screwed it up really badly and we would have had a lovely PCB that didn't do anything. Um, Without the team that have done the embedded development, it wouldn't have worked at all. But all of these things is really one person. And when that person's busy or having to move house, or in Bob's case, move an entire hack space, um, <laughs> we, or, or, or being in South Africa twice, that, that <laughs> happened, um, it's, we, we need more people to help out. But we also, because this thing needs money behind it in the first place, we do need money. Um, we need sponsors, mainly for components and mainly in kind. We, we actually don't really like taking cash for this. We would rather have all the parts given to us and time on machines and assistance and in any possible way. It would be great. And I'm sure there are people in the room who have contacts or uh, can think of people that we should be talking to or maybe even would like to get involved. Um, but if you would like to get involved with this and would like to help build this for the future, please do come and talk to the team after. Um, we're quite receptive to new people. And we're also looking for new ideas. Like the, 
we don't just want to roll with the same platform. The point of the badge is to give you something that no one has had before, something that's interesting to play with, something that's fun at the camp, and then people can use to learn afterwards. We want to see the badge, well, all sorts of weird things done with the badge after the camp. Um, and that means it has to be reusable, and we have to <laughs> produce something that... Yeah, on, on that. Oh, go on. Oh, on that note. On that note, yeah, I've got notes. The microphone. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot, I forgot about this. Um, so we've, we've got some prizes. Uh, we've, we've got some prizes for the best badge app that's been built so far out of the 60 we've had submitted. Um, we also are going to offer an, a prize for the best app built by the end of September to give you a bit more time because most of you only got them yesterday and it was a bit crashy. So it's... <laughs> yeah, none of it's my fault. Only the app store was really crashy. So, sorry, it's our app library. Um, um, and also the best hardware integration. Uh, so, there are some things on this badge which may not be obvious. Uh, it has been designed for conductive thread, so along the top there are conductive thread holes. Uh, on the right hand side are connectors that are very suitable for making a drone. If you would, <laughs> so, um, I was kind of hoping someone would do that at the camp, but it hasn't happened yet. Um, ben hooked his me arm up. Oh yeah, we've had, a, we've had a small robot arm hooked up to already. Um, but the prizes are, so for the best badge app built so far, and we've decided this based on the one that made us all giggle, um, in, in a good way, uh, is, is the one that does uh, Wi-Fi geolocation on the badge, and then also shows you what, what is now and next on the stage is if you happen to be in a stage. Just because it, it's really lovely, it works really well, and it's a great app. And I don't know if the person here is in here who built it. I suspect, that, is it you? Yeah. Right, so you win another badge. <laughs> and if, if you want one of the badges that go on fire occasion, you can have one of those too. <laughs> In fact, we've got about 70. You can take all the ones you want. So, <laughs> uh, quite seriously, if anyone does want a badge from 2014, they, they, they really don't go on fire that much. Um, we're, we have loads of them, and we're, they're on sale from the badge tent for, I think, what is it? 15. 15 quid. They're really nice Arduino development boards. They've got a really nice screen, really nice wireless chips and things on them. Uh, if you would like one, drop by there. Um, uh, and then the, the prize for the best badge app built by the end of September will be two free tickets to the next EMF. Um, I know, and a cuddly toy. Um, yes. uh, and two free tickets. If we do a one day next year, maybe, then two free tickets to that as well. Um, so that is worth doing. And there's, I've been talking to people who are building apps, and they're having quite a lot of fun with it. So I'd recommend having a go, submitting apps to us, and seeing what happens. Um, and the best, oh, the same for the best hardware integration is two free tickets to the next EMF and also the one day. So uh, I would recommend having a go. More slides? Are there any uh, more? More questions. Are there any yeah. more questions? Oh, any more questions? Oh, yeah. We've got, we've got another Sam from Nextmo. Minutes. Yeah, oh, Sam more questions? Next Sam from Nextmo. Everyone oh. to the stage. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of desperately packing up my camp because I'm trying to get home to get a flight somewhere. But um, I just want to say thank you very much for those that have played with stuff and poked stuff and done stuff. A um, few people have asked us about the messages and it says, you know, what happens with the messages afterwards. So I'm going to repeat the spiel that I've been giving everybody. Um, the numbers that are currently assigned, so there's an on-site badge server that the messages app talks to, um, which will, I believe, go down tomorrow sometime and possibly be back up towards the end of, ne of the week-ish. We, it, it may not go down at all, we, so oh, we'll see what happens. We may. There may be some, a brief outage in the next week, but that should be back up and working. Those numbers that are currently on your badges are pointing at that server and your badges talk to that server. That will all stay until, at I'll leave all those numbers till at least the end of the August. Before the end of August, I'll also publish some stuff on the Nexmo blog and I'll tweet it and Nexmo will tweet it, so just follow us somewhere. Um, about basically how to get yourself your own number. Um, you can sign up for an Exmo account and I'll give you a chunk of free credit that will keep a number running for at least a year, depending on as long as you don't want a number in sort of South Africa or something where they're really expensive. Um, <laughs> but you can point, you choose your own number, point that at a server, we'll work out the server. Um, we're going to open source all the server code and I'm going to try and we'll run a long term server for the messaging stuff and push some improvements. That's basically it. Um, and if you need anything, just like tweet me or something but I'm going to be travelling, so I might not answer immediately. <laughs> What's your Twitter handle? Uh, yeah. Sam Machin on Twitter, if you can find it in the um, 
we'll, we'll speaker stuff and things. You see the speaker slides for his talk. Google it. it. Yeah, my talk. Uh, so if you want the worst SMS device ever for the next year, you can keep it. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right, so have we got any more questions then? Yeah. Like we've got five more minutes. One at the back. Right at the back. Hmm? One at the, right right the, the back. Two at the back. While they're running the uh, thing down there, everyone that got a badge will have had a thing from Texas Instruments, and they've got a competition as well to, uh, to win one of their dev boards. It's just a prize draw, so if you look on the leaflet you got with the badge and uh, sign up that, and uh, say, I push that particularly because Roger from TI was so, so helpful to me um, in getting the wireless working. Yeah. In fact, yeah. he would be replying to emails at half past two in the morning. Um, you mentioned about uh, the 2016 hardware hacks. Um, there was a competition for the 2014 badge. Um, did anything actually come out of that? Yes, um, and I meant to look it up before I came on stage. <laughs> so I don't know who the person was, but I do know who won that. And I've been quite busy organizing a thing. So uh, I forgot to tell them that they won the prize. <laughs> but uh, who? It, Whoever wrote their own operating system for the entire for the 2014 badge, and I mean a complete oh, operating system. On the left. Are they on the left over there? You you have also won two tickets for next year, which you should have had for this year. But I hope that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> All right, I think we've got one more one more question time. Uh, oh, here it's easy. If you could have added one feature to the badge for this year, what would it have been? <laughs> Bike shed approaching. <laughs> no, actually, so the, uh, not Epo, but no, actually the um, the screens that are on there actually come in a touchscreen option. Um, and and, and <clears throat> so the we brought twenty screens for the for the for the for the for the badge teams to play around with. Um, but they're too shiny and gloss for, for actually giving out. But it's all wired up. So if you go out and buy the touch the touchscreen version of the screen and write some code, uh, yeah, touchscreen interface. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we did also have uh, we we tried to do an e-paper variant of the previous badge, and we kind of wanted to do that again with this one. But e-paper's really very slow for good interfaces. Um, one of the things we looked at was uh, there's a, a type sharp of LCD, memory LCD, yeah, sharp memory LCD, which is like e-paper, uh, but with a much higher refresh rate. Yeah, uh, the Pebble watches use it, and we'd really like to use that, but it's far too expensive for us to sponsor. And Sharp um, won't sponsor it. Yeah. And Sharp won't sponsor it for good reasons because they they'd given a lot of money to cancer research, and I, that is a very good cause. So <laughs> instead of shiny badges, um, <laughs> but if anyone here works for Sharp, uh, I'd really like to talk to you. So it's. Uh, <laughs> Um, uh, there's, there's actually two tiny things that we haven't talked about with this, which we, we're really short on time now. Um, one is there is a magnetometer in it, which is a compass. Um, no one has done anything with it yet because we haven't documented it. Um, <laughs> but read the data sheet. It, read the data sheet. It's chained off the accelerometer, so you have to put the accelerometer in some mode that should then. So if somebody gets that working, I'll buy them a pint. Uh, I would love to see a little compass app. That'd be really neat. Um, and the second one is, some of you may already have seen this, but the LED on the badges doesn't work. Um, and it, we mean the big shiny LED that's up the top, which most people have probably assumed is nothing important. But that's a big RGB LED and it should be working. Um, it kind of got put on backwards. Um, so, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that, I think that's it really. Yeah, yeah. we've been swapping around for people. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we have been swapping them over and we probably still will do a few if you want to pop over to the badge tent. Yeah. 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 Uh, and if uh, yeah, this is true. Uh, anyone who's good at soldering should be able to resolder this for you. Your local hackerspace will be able to do it easily. Um, it just it, you'll need to replace it because it turns out if you turn it on, it actually destroys it. Um, so it's not a matter of turning it round. You need a new one. Um, but we do actually have one for every person here, so you can come get one from us. And where, where do we get them from? Sorry, from uh, the badge the, tent. The BO, yeah, the badge yeah. tent. So get them from the badge tent. All right. Well, I, I'm afraid that's that's all the time we have for you guys. Um, but I'm sure everyone enjoyed that, so please thank yeah. the guys for making such a fantastic badge.